I got a message from one of my YouTube viewers and um, it looks like they were translating their language into English, but suffice it to say, it looks like they're having trouble with multi-state objects when making their own buttons. And, you know, I thought back and I realized that, you know, 209 videos ago, I did do um, a video about image buttons with rollover effects. And I'll actually put a link to that up here in the upper right hand corner. That particular video is still very much applicable, even though it's one of my earlier videos, the quality isn't quite as good as the ones I do today. And uh, it's also working with Adobe Captivate 8. But like I said, it's completely applicable in today's version of Adobe Captivate. So uh, if you apply the principles of that video, you can certainly make your own uh, image uh, buttons as well. But today we'll talk about two different types of buttons and why you would want to be able to uh, use either one. The first type is a transparent button. And the second type is going to be your own smart shape button. Uh, in this case, smart shapes being used as buttons. And I'll talk about some of the details about each and do a little bit of a comparison. So let's get started. So I have a, a blank slide here in Adobe Captivate. And we'll start off by inserting a button, just a regular interaction button from the interactions drop down icon. And when you do that, it's going to create a text button. Now, nowadays, I wouldn't expect that there are too many people using text buttons because there's really not a lot of flexibility uh, in a text button. You can, of course, change the caption of a text button. So I could type in the word next if I was creating a go to next slide button. I can change the font. I can change the text color. I really have no control over the color of the button itself. Um, you know, I can make it bold, italic, underline, all the basic stuff, but there really isn't a lot of flexibility with text buttons. And that's why most people today probably immediately go from text buttons to transparent buttons or image buttons. And like I said, you can take a look at the image button video I did uh, a couple of years ago. The transparent button does give you greater flexibility. So in this case here, uh, it's going to take on the characteristics of a uh, the, the standard uh, transparent button, and you have control over the fill state. So you can make it a blue button with white text, or you can add a corner radius of, let's say, uh, right up to... 50%, which gives you a nice rounded pill style look. And of course, with your multi-state objects, a lot of the, uh, uh, what I like to think of as my, my parent state, if I go back and just get, uh, get a look at the normal state, this is what I consider my parent, uh, state and the rollover and the down states are child states. In other words, they inherit uh, many of the characteristics of the normal state. So, uh, but you can go and make individual changes. Like I can change the fill effect to be maybe a slightly different color blue with uh, dark text just to oppose the uh, standard normal state. And then the down state can be something entirely different. It can be maybe a green color with white text, uh, things of that nature. So you can make pretty much any change you want. You can even use gradient effects. And uh, to, to a degree, you can also actually choose an image fill so that the background gets filled with either a stretched image or a tiled image. So there's a lot of flexibility in, uh, I don't know if that's a great choice, but there's a lot of flexibility in the, uh, the style that you can create with um, a transparent button. The problem with transparent buttons is that they're still limited. They, they don't allow you to take this button and paste it on certain slides. Specifically, if I was to create a question slide and we go to multiple choice and we just add a, a single multiple choice question here, I don't have the ability to copy that next button that we've created and paste it on here. In fact, if you go to your edit drop down menu, paste is grayed out. I cannot paste 
and nor can I create a new button of any type uh, from the interactions drop down menu where you can can make up for this this deficiency really is by using smart shape buttons and let me show you an example of that you start off by creating a smart shape so I'm going to select a rounded rectangle uh, let's say we're going to put it uh, down here at the bottom for now just uh, we might we might move it to another spot later the first thing I recommend that you do is that you uh, design your smart shape as if it were a single state object and don't think about multi states at all so let's try and create sort of that traditional um, let's just get this out of the way here let's start off with a the rounded corners we can use the selection control unlike a transparent button you actually can grab the selection handle and just drag it as far as you wish to go rather than entering in a percentage for the uh, the the rounded corner uh, let's choose a background color in fact let's make this a gradient fill and we'll choose a gradient fill from the the choices that are available but you could completely customize this yourself I'm gonna keep the uh, the rounded look by by using the darker gradient to give it sort of a three-dimensional look and the stroke will make that a little thicker reminiscent of those old Apple uh, buttons of the late 90s and of course I can double click and add my caption so that looks pretty good let's uh, let's maybe bump up the font a little bit on that uh, we'll use uh, let's just use Arial just to keep it simple so there's a very nice simple button now uh, it's not a button until of course you check off uses button but what I recommend that before you do that you save this as a new style and the reason being is that if I just check off uses button it's going to take on all the characteristics uh, that the default smart shape style has for um, rollover and down effects and we want to create those from scratch in fact it's much easier I find to start off with just a single state object like I've got here um, because right now of course it's a modified version of the default smart style so if I make it my own by creating a new style and you can do that from selecting from the menu option under style name under the properties panel and uh, give it a name make it something meaningful like uh, uh, maybe something like the theme that you're creating um, in this case I'm just going to call this Paul's pill just to keep it simple and so now I have my own style of button and I'm going to now check off uses button and what's going to happen is it's not only going to give me the actions tab where I can assign any number of uh, actions including a, a, a literal endless choice of advanced actions that you can create but it's also going to create my multi-state object so let's click on state view so we can see the different uh, versions of this button in underneath the different states so again like I like to think of this the normal state is my uh, parent state and the rollover and down states are my child state so all I need now is to make some small differences uh, let's jump right down to the down state so one of the things that I like to do for the down state is to reverse the gradient and that gives you the effect of someone pressing on it you see it looks like it's been depressed and that's a neat effect for the rollover effect maybe what we could do is just change something very subtly we could give it a, a slight blue color to the outline of the button and maybe we could change the text of that button to the same blue just to give it a slightly different effect from the standard normal state and once you exit that state uh, you may wish to of course uh, save changes to existing style and that button will now take on all those characteristics and if I make additional buttons in the future for example if I was to make a, another button here we'll just draw real quick another button and we'll use that as a button 
and then we change it to Paul's pill, it will suddenly take on the characteristics and all the settings that this button had. Um, and of course, if I wanted to make it a rounded rectangle, that's easy to do too. So there's my quick and dirty uh, additional button that I can add at any point, And now I have that available to me at any time. But again, the real advantage of uh, smart shape buttons, again, we're, remember, we're on a quiz slide here. And we can add our own buttons to multiple choice questions, uh, true, false questions, drag and drops, whatever it is that you might want to want to create a button for. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.